would like to talk about redefine really well-being in this day and age because I believe this is the question that strikes the hardest at the core of our modern societies. A lot of people were asking me, am I too young to talk about this? Or have I been, you know, experienced, you know, profound enough of experience to speak on this topic? Because I believe that this is something that a lot of people have been asking themselves. It's not every day that we get to experience this, you know, such a fast and quickly moving societies where having to, you know, seek the balance between, you know, a, a careers and also the parts where we feel truly connected to ourselves. Over the past two decades something, I've spent a lot of time moving across from Europe to Asia to North America, uh, both thanks to my upbringings and also the educational backgrounds. And for, for the most part, I would consider myself to be someone that are very much fortunate enough to experience this international lens that I get to you know, see things through different perspectives and experience different cultures. This got me to think of why well-being has become essential to me over the years. I started my career when I was very, very young, um, at the age of nearly when I was 18. And I started my career when in a very challenging industry as well, which was fashion and creativity. It was at the time where I believed I was a victim of the hustle culture. I pretty much I drank the Kuwait of the hustle culture. I believed the success for me at the time was through working 16 hours a day, constantly being plugged in and you know replying to emails, messages, work messages nonstop, even if it's like 2 a.m. Um, and on top of that was the willingness to take on more without ever having a, you know, a stop to reflect on what I have done so far. It was not until I was hospitalized when I passed out at the Beijing airport that I realized that, um, you know what, this might be the wake up call that I need. It was not the first accident that happened to me that related to my uh, well-being, but it was the wake-up call that I needed to realize that this is this is when I need to make some change. I need to make some crucial change to my personal life and my professional careers as well. I believe that there are things within yourself that you if you feel better about what you have done so far, what have you achieved so far, then that should be the goals. That should be something that you feel enough within yourself to move forward in a more positive life. Some of the key messages that I have learned in this phrase in my life was, you know, success is not solely about the external achievements, but also about the well-being and fulfillment that you achieve along the way. It's the journey that matters. And well-being has become a non-negotiable part. And on top of that, in a far-changing environment, you know, from the world war of startup to structured organizations, corporate to multinational corporations, organizations is encouraged to, you know, to prioritize uh, focus from productivity to fostering a culture that promotes well-being and wellness. Uh, work law integrations. So, which brought me to the second aspect that I believe is also transformative for not only for me, but hopefully will inspire you guys as well. I would like to uh, share a very deeply personal story. Um, for those of you who do not know, leukemia is simply put white blood cell cancer. So, I was unfortunately diagnosed with leukemia when I was eight years old when life had just started for me. And it was a challenging chapter. I was too young to understand what is leukemia, what is like to have leukemia, and how do I go on with life at life with leukemia. 
matter of fact, funny story, um, my parents was hiding the fact that I was having leukemia at the time because they believe that I do not need to know what I'm going through. They want to keep the best positive environment for me. They said that the best chance I'd have at living is one year from now, which was heartbreaking to hear for any parents for that matter. Um, so my parents spent a lot of time taking me everywhere, finding the answer to my own existence, to my own living. We were not rich to begin with at the time. And, uh, but I remember that my mom and my dad sat me down one day to say that if we have one chance to give you the life that you deserve, we're going to do it. But it's up to you that you have to be the one that won the life that you deserve. Because if it's not, then it, there's no amount of medicine or our own effort and emotional support that can help you. So it was through this phrase that I went through the next four years in chemo. It was a very challenging chapter for me as I, I was living lives like it was my last day very much. In the last year of chemo, I was going through um, bone marrow transplantations. And it was through this time where the chemo killings every living cell in my physical being that I realized that there's more to well-being than just the physical cell. Because I believe that it was not a miracle, the reason why I survived, but it's more about the combination of emotional support from my parents and the spiritual resilience that I have developed to overcome this difficult time. It's not until I got rid of the leukemia that I realized that there's something long, long answer that I've been searching for. I believe this is something that I have drawn over the years to the long life quest of, you know, what is the art of balance? How do you reach the art of balance? But for me, I have learned to draw and summarize the three key factors, which is discipline, time management and mindfulness. So why these three? Why discipline? Why time management? And why mindfulness? For me, discipline is something that can help you to create a routine, a healthy structure within your life that creates room for your own well-being. And time management is helping you to create space dedicate space for self-care, for reflection, for meaningful connections, and ultimately mindfulness. You know, mindfulness practice can essentially accelerate and help you to achieve and having deeper reflection on what have you been seeking for. And that's also including making decisions in a day-to-day -day basis, as well as, you know, within the work environments as well. So, when I first moved to Bali in 2017, I was not the one that believed in yoga. And it's not until I moved away from Bali that I realized that, do you know what? This might be it. This might be the answer that I was looking for. So I started. Uh, and for the last six years something, I have been an advocate member of the yoga and meditation communities. And essentially now that I have moved into different chapter in my life where work has become more international in the sense that we all work remotely for me in particular. It could be like 15 minutes of you know meditations or it could be something like the commitment that I made recently was uh, practicing yoga for an hour and a half every day, which I, I reached that milestone and that was a phenomenal achievement that I feel within myself. And the reason why I was achieving that is because I realized that it doesn't matter how busy you are. What you need to do is that you need to um, encourage yourself that you can do it, that you can insert discipline and manage time management. It's not that you can integrate the act of mindfulness 
in your daily basis. And the key message that I chose from this one was mindfulness and you know similar activity it could be sport, it could be football, art, drawings, all of that can enhance emotional resonance as well as coherence between your physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. And for discipline, time management, mindfulness, this is what I believe would be the essential tool to help you to achieve the author balance. But for me, it had come to the point where I simplify it and send that I encourage every single one of you that's sitting here today to you know reflect on your own journeys, challenge societal norms, and make a commitment to integrate well-being into every aspect of your life. It might not sound much, but you will start to see changes and that is something that I believe that everyone here can the capacity and capability to do. And yeah, thank you for coming to my TED talk.